Hi, my name is Dave Bryant, Director of Technology at CTC Global Corporation in Irvine, California. We, CTC Global developed the ACCC conductor that's currently been deployed to over 350 projects in 33 countries, representing about 35,000 kilometers of wire in service today. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the conductor comparison program that we developed. Uh, we call it CCP because it stands for Conductor Comparison Program. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at the program, you have the ability to compare four different conductor types. We typically put uh, ACCC in as a base conductor. Uh, the existing conductor is typically represented by conductor one. In this case, it was an ACSR Drake. Uh, conductor two, we're going to compare uh, ACSS HS285 Drake, uh, along with uh, 3M's product ACCR, also in a Drake size. If you want to compare a different type of conductor, you can select uh, a number of different conductor types from the drop-down menu. Uh, there's a very extensive library of international conductor types and sizes, uh, but for today's demo we're going to keep it relatively simple. Uh, and, and you look in the upper category here, any, anything that's uh, depicted in yellow or highlighted in yellow can be changed. Uh, these uh, The database is fairly uh, Substantial it includes the cross-sectional area of the conductor, uh, the Drake being 10, uh, 1025.6, ACSR 795, ACSS HS285 also 795 KC mills. The 3M product also has 824 KC mills. The diameters are depicted in the next column. 1.108 inches is a pretty standard size for a Drake conductor in terms of diameter. You can see the rated strength varies from 41,000 200 pounds for ACCC to uh, 31,500 pounds for uh, ACSR, uh, about the same for AC HS285 and ACCR. Uh, it also gives us a weight per foot, uh, 1,051 pounds per thousand for ACCC, uh, slightly more for ACSS, uh, uh, similar with ACSS, HS285 and 3M's product, uh, ACCR. Uh, the DC and AC resistance are also depicted on the next three columns. Uh, for the purposes of a simple comparison, we're going to look at uh, one circuit, uh, one conductor per phase. This is an AC line. Uh, this also will give us uh, ampacity at temperatures. We can compare uh, any temperature by changing the, the, the number in yellow, the highlighted number in yellow. Uh, right now the default is 90 degrees. It also will give you uh, ampacity uh, for these conductors at their rated continuous temperature, uh, which is 180C for ACCC, 200 for ACCC, and then um, 75 and 100 are typically the numbers used for ACSR. Uh, 200 is a standard maximum continuous operating temperature for a HS285 or ACSS conductor. Uh, it can run as high as 250 degrees C under emergency conditions. 3M also ranges from about 210 to 240 C. Uh, now, we're going to move over a little bit. Uh, I'm going to um, shift the, the screen over so you can see uh, some of the ambient assumptions. First of all, you can, com you can com uh, select US or metric units in this box. Uh, AC, uh, you can have a AC or DC monopolar bipolar. Uh, and the, the units are listed in uh, or the languages English, Chinese, Russian, and so forth. I only speak English, so I'm going to keep it simple uh, today. Um, you can specify the sun radiation, uh, or you can, um, you can I actually input the radiation, and based on azimuth of the line, latitude, month, day, time, and atmosphere. Uh, in this case, the defaults uh, based on 738 standards is about 90.6. Uh, watts per square foot. Uh, we're assuming an ambient temperature of 30 degrees C, uh, wind at 2 feet per second, uh, 350 foot elevation above sea level, uh, emissivity and solar absorptivity both at 0.6, uh, with the wind angle coming at 9, 90 degrees. The azimuth of the line is running uh, 90 degrees that are east-west. Uh, for comparison, we're going to use 40 miles uh, for this for this comparison, uh, the voltage is 230 kV. The existing peak ampacity is at 900 amps. Load factor, which is about standard for California, is 63%. Uh, it calculates loss factor 
uh, and the, the peak uh, circuit megawatts about uh, 359. Again, this is a AC with three phases, a single circuit. Uh, here we've made an assumption that the cost of generation is $70 per megawatt hour or seven cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, we, we have the option on, in terms of generation type, we can select from combined cycle of natural gas, simple cycle of natural gas, coal, oil, muni waste, geothermal, or wind, solar, nuclear. Uh, and today we're gonna just pick the uh, national average. Of course, you can input your own value if you happen to have a, a blend of your utilities uh, generation. Uh, the national average currently in the U.S. is about 1.372 pounds of CO2 per uh, kilowatt hour. The Another assumption that we can plug in here is the cost of generation, which in this case we're going to say is about 1.5 million per megawatt to develop generation. Uh, we have a 10% reserve in this assumption. Uh, initial sagging temperature is 15 degrees C. Maximum allowable sag or clearance is 32 feet in this line. When we uh, when we start getting into the numbers, uh, well, first let's go, let's go back a moment. This we started out with an assumption of uh, peak operating uh, uh, amps was about uh, 900, uh, and when we climb back over to ACSR, we can see that the conductor temperature was about 76 degrees under these ambient assumptions. Uh, at 900 amps. Well, in this case, we need to increase the amps. So we're going to go from 900, we're going to run it up to 1500 amps. Again, that's uh, peak amps uh, with, again, a load factor of, of 63%. When we scroll back over to the conductor comparison, we can see that the, the uh, at 1500 amps with the basic assumptions, the ACCC conductor is going to run at 129 degrees C. The ACSR conductor is going to be up to, if it was still usable, up to 162 degrees C. Uh, ACSS acceptable at 159 degrees C, as with uh, AECCR also 152 degrees C, uh, which are they're fine because it's uh, they're high temperature capable. Of course, ACSR is not generally run at that temperature, uh, in part because of the sag. The other part is because the, the hardware isn't really designed to operate at those temperatures. So you'd have to, if you wanted to increase from 900 to 1500 amps or whatever current you were looking for, you'd have to consider a, a larger size diameter conventional conductor, uh, but that would most likely require the uh, replacement of, or raising of structures. Uh, and there we start looking at uh, electrical resistance at these temperatures and you see uh, uh, 0.125 uh, ohms per mile in this conductor, 1.77 uh, for this conductor and so forth. Uh, and this translates into line losses that range from 127,000 megawatt hours with ACCC over to 181,000 uh, with ACSR. Uh, so the ACCC conductor represents the savings of 53,000, almost 54,000 uh, megawatt hours every year, uh, or roughly a 30% improvement under this load condition compared to ACSR. Now at, um, at seven cents per kilowatt hour, this translates into $3.7 million savings per year uh, by switching from ACSR to ACCC. It represents a $3.4 million improvement over ACSS, and it represents a $2.7 million improvement over the, the ACCR product under these operating assumptions at, again, a 63% load factor. Now you can also translate the the savings uh, of these savings into like well, what does that equate to per conductor foot? So in this case, over ACSR, we're saving about five dollars and ninety six cents uh, per year over ACSR of the same size, which is um, oh about um, one hundred and thirty percent, one hundred and forty percent of the actual cost of conductor. So of ACCC. So this would basically indicate that you would um, if you replace ACSR with ACCC. The line loss reductions alone would pay for itself oh, in, in less than a year, maybe six or seven months. Uh, over a 30-year period, uh, we're, we're looking at a uh, about $113 million savings in line loss reductions compared to ACSR using ACCC, $104 million improvement over uh, ACSS, HS285 or ACSS period, about $81 million savings in line loss reductions compared to 3M's product again with these assumptions and a Drake size conductor. Uh, also, 
uh, we're, re we're doing a significant job of reducing emissions, assuming that uh, we use a U.S. Na average of uh, 1.372 pounds of CO2 per uh, kilowatt hour, we'd be saving over 33,000 metric tons of CO2 every year, uh, or about a million pounds of CO2 over the life of a 30-year service life of the conductor uh, at that point in time. Um, also, it's interesting that um, there's a, a tremendous amount of generations required to support line losses. By using ACCC as opposed to ACSR, ACSS, we'd be saving uh, roughly 14 to 15 megawatts of generation in the process. Now, compared to ACSR at, uh, at 1.5 million per megawatt, that initial upfront savings would free up essentially 15 and a half megawatts of generation uh, or 23 and a half million dollars right up front. So if you consider the cost of the conductor and the savings in generation capacity alone, this is going to pay for the conductor and installation costs with money left over to spare. Uh, we'd spend about half of that to do a reconductor project or, or less. So it's quite quite important value proposition of ACCC and this software program can help us uh, uh, easily determine that. We, we also uh, have uh, SAG intention in, uh, information available in, in this program. We're going to scroll back over to the SAG tension graph. Um, if this was a, an ACSR conductor installed on a ridge a line at uh, 32 um, feet of clearance, the ACSR would have kind of uh, died off at, at that, that clearance level at roughly um, 100 degrees C. Um, ACSS is capable of operating higher. Its thermal knee point is about 90 degrees C, but you can see because it's steel core, it's going to continue to sag, uh, most likely exceeding the clearance limitation. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to get uh, all of the amps out of that, uh, that conductor uh, based on sag limitations. Um, 3M is, is much improved over ACSS, uh, so that would get you to full capacity. But again, you're operating up close to 240 degrees C at max capacity while ACCC uh, has a thermal knee point at about 65 degrees C initially, uh, at which point the aluminum relaxes its load and, share and sends the entire load to the core that's very dimensionally stable, so you, you have uh, very good clearance uh, capabilities, which if represented on a new line would allow you to put in a, a, a tower that was about um, five or six feet shorter than, than the initial tower for use for ACSR conductor. And again, it uh, operates at much cooler uh, with still a higher degree of amperage. Uh, we'll scroll, da scroll down a little bit. You can see that in, in this scenario, uh, we're assuming an NESC heavy condition that that can be adjusted. Uh, the NESC uh, provides a temperature of minus 20 degrees C, wind speed of 40 miles an hour, K factor of 0.3 pounds per foot, radii thickness at uh, 0.75. Uh, three quarters of an inch and ice density of 57 pounds per cubic foot. Uh, maximum allowable RTS is 60%. Is, uh, uh, scrolling over, so we can see uh, differences in the, in the SAG under these various conditions. Uh, the, the percent of RTS, uh, ACCC would be about 30% RTS, ACSR about 45% RTS, uh, 3M's product about 47% RTS under uh, extreme ice load conditions. Uh, it also uh, gives you the ability to assess knee point temperature. Uh, move, moving back to the top, we can also see what would the uh, ampacity be uh, at these uh, at the rated temperatures. Uh, so emergency rating for ACCC recommended operating is 200 degrees C max. You get 1,921 amps. Uh, ACSR max is only 1,100 amps. 3M, excuse me, uh, uh, HS285 or uh, uh, ACSS conductor about 1900 amps uh, at 250 degrees C, which is comparable to the, the CTC 1921 amps, about the same amperage, but you'll notice that this 50 degrees C hotter, which reflects um, a substantial uh, addition in, in electrical losses. The same holds true with the 3M product at 240, but about the same amps. So they're capable of it, but they do it less efficiently than a triple C conductor. So this, this is a program, again, that can be used to conduct, can compare any conductor size or type. Uh, it's very effective. The, the inputs are all based on um, 738, uh, IEEE 738 uh, assumptions, uh, the latest and greatest version of that. You can plug in all the variables, make sure that you use um, uh, values that, that make sense. In other words, uh, it's doubtful that you'd ever see a 100% load factor. Uh, so look at load factors. 
con consider the voltage, the line length, uh, and if you give it good input, it's very easy to compare things, including uh, you know sag intention, ampacity, and so forth. So if you need help, uh, we're always here. Our application engineering team is available essentially 24/7 because we operate worldwide. You can reach them at uh, the email address application support at ctcglobal.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day.